In this video, we're going to put our combination technique to the test, and instead of solving two equations, we're going to see how would we solve three simultaneous equations. This is going to be a little messy, but you shouldn't be scared of this. This is really the test of whether you understood the technique. And you could even use the same technique to solve four equations, five equations, but it's going to get more and more tedious. So here's the idea. First of all, we have three equations. That's x, y's, and z's. So what does this look like visually? Each one of these is linear because all the exponents are ones and they're just combinations of multiples of x, x's, y's, and z's. So all of these look like sort of 3D sheets. So if we were to draw these, let's say that's one sheet and then we have, pardon my not so great drawing. <laughs> so let's say we have two equations and these two are some sort of sheets and finding where these solutions are are the intersections of these sheets so this if we only have two of them then we would expect to get a line because the, remember these are infinite sheets so they, they don't just they're not little like rectangles they go up and down infinitely and this way infinitely so they're gonna hit at this line that's gonna stretch forever so that's two of them but then we have a third one so the third one might be at some sort of angle to them and unless this is perfectly at a right angle, in real life, it's gonna be a little tilted, either this way or this way. So if you focus on this red line, as soon as we tilt this third black sheet a little bit, it will at some point hit that red line, either here or down here. Like I said, unless it's perfectly designed to be at the same angle. So if they're, if they're like this, they're never gonna hit. But if there's even a little bit of a tilt, and you go out far enough, it will hit. So that tells us there's three equations, three constraints, and as we discussed in the conceptual video, chances are, since I've randomly designed these numbers, they should give us a unique solution. If not, then we got really unlucky. All right, so that's the first thing to keep in mind is that this seems pretty good, we should even attempt to solve this. If it seemed pretty bad, we shouldn't even try to solve this. All right, so here's the name of the game. There's three equations which we'll label one, two, and three, or else we'll completely get lost. We want to try to get from three equations and three variables to two equations and two variables. So in general, if you have four equations, four variables, you want to try to get down to three equations and three variables. And then you're going to try to get down to two equations and two variables, and then one equation one, one, one variable, and that's easy to solve. So we're not starting all the way here, but we are going to have to start here and create two different two equations and two variable problems. So let's see what I mean. Let's decide which variable we don't like. Now, the best way to do that is look for the easiest numbers. It appears to be the y's because they're only ones. So why don't we add equations one and two? So equation one plus equation two. I highly encourage you guys to label these and put them here to stay organized. Otherwise, when you make a mistake or something goes wrong, you'll have no idea where you got this equation from. So we know this is coming from adding these two equations. So that's five X, these are gone. That's three Z equals 10. All right, fair enough. That doesn't look really impressive, but we're gonna do this again. And this time, instead of eliminating y from these two, we'll pick any other two. So that means you can pick either one and three or two and three, it doesn't matter. So let's see which one we'd rather do. Since that's a positive, that's a negative, why don't we pick one and three? But first we're gonna have to scale this to be a three so that the threes cancel. So we're gonna triple equation one and then add equation three. Now what are we doing here? That's the combination method. So what is, um, in school, typically you'll see this done step by step. So first you'll want to triple this. So that'll be six X plus three Y plus three Z equals 12. And then we're going to subtract, sorry, we're going to add equation three. All right. So after doing this, we'll get 10 X. These are gone by design. That's negative two z and that's going to be 22. All right. 
So let's call this thing equation four, and we'll call this thing equation five, because these one, two, and three are already taken. All right, so I'm not gonna even solve this, but here's the idea. We have two equations now, and if you look at the variables, they only have X's and Z's. Now we know how to solve this because it's two equations with two variables. So what we would do is solve this system using our traditional techniques. So for example, since that's a 10 and that's a five, maybe you double this one to turn this into 10 X plus six Z plus equals 30, uh, equals, sorry, 10, 10 X plus six equals 20, and then sub subtract them because the tens will cancel. So that will give you a solution for X is something, Z is something. And now you can plug this into any one of these and find your Y. All right. Now, could we have done a different order? Yes, it doesn't matter. The idea is you pick any pair of them. So we picked one and two and we got rid of one of the variables. Then we picked another pair. So one and three, you could have picked two and three, doesn't matter. You picked one, and three. We first scaled this to achieve the three here. So we eliminated the same variable. Don't eliminate a different variable because then you'll have X's and Z's and then you might have like X's and Y's. That's no good. You want these same two variables to appear here. And then you solve this as you did in the previous combination video. And from then, from there on out, you plug this in, get your Y. So if we had four equations, you do the same thing, it would just be more annoying. So first you go from four equations down to this case. So let's say we had X's, Y's, Z's and Q's in our and four equations with these letters. So first you would let's say get three equations with no Q's and then from here you would do that. So you'd keep simplifying it. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video.